Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to cover how I do chipping on my vehicles as a weathering effect. This one was actually requested by somebody who wanted to know how I get my hands on this particular effect, so hey, shout out. <laughs> now I apologize in advance, I'm not too well at the moment, so if my voice sounds a little bit uh, croakier than usual, that's why. So please give me, you know, give me a consideration for that. <laughs> now. This effect is actually incredibly easy to achieve. So we'll get you a quick close up because this chimera over here is how I was showing you the other day, you know, how a few little details can really set off a model. Now this is a very, very simple color scheme. This was, you know, just sprayed, washed and dry brushed. Uh, and then these chipping effects were done over the top just to finish it off. Now it is so easy to do this and it makes a big difference to how the model looks, you know, versus putting that on the table with nothing and putting it on the table with these cool chipping effects, you know, I, I think it looks dumb as a result. So today I'm going to show you how to do that on an old standby of mine. Now anybody who used to hang around in Games Workshop Gloucester or Cheltenham will remember this, <laughs> this old Lehman Russ. This is Danger Russ. And uh, he's been in my collection ooh, uh, the better part of 12, maybe 13 years. So you can see the paint job is a little simple. Uh, but I have gone and I've picked up the edges with some dry brushing, you know, just to make it a little bit brighter. But what we can do now to really set it off and make it look that bit cooler is I'm going to use this to show you how I do the armor chipping. So for this, you're only going to need two things. That is two paints of your choosing, and I'll go into why I use these two, and some of this old, uh, what is this, sponge cloth. Now you used to get this in blister packs all the time, but unfortunately it's a little bit rarer to come by these days. Games Workshop doesn't pack their blister packs with this anymore. Places like Warlord, for example, with their bolt action figures, you can still pick it up there. But for the purposes of our, uh, our sponge chipping effect, any bit of sponge will do. It just has to have kind of a rough texture to it. You know, the rougher you can get, the better. You see how it's a little bit uneven towards the edges? That's exactly what we want. Now you can use any sponge for this. It works best if it is the slightly rougher stuff, but anything even out of the kitchen. As long as it's clean and dry and hasn't gone all gunky and horrible from using, from being used for the dishes all the time. So I'm going to use this because it's what I've got. Now this is as easy as, I just want a slightly smaller piece. I don't need the whole thing. So again, if you find some of this, it'll last you for ages. And you can see how delicate and measured and careful this step is. I really want just a little square that I can use. This is going to be my, my sponge, my brush, if you will. Then I've got the two paints. Now the first one you're going to put on is your, kind of the base coat for the tank. Okay, what we're going to pretend the vehicle was base coated in when it came out of the factory. Now I'm going to use Rhinox Hide for this one because I like this. It's got a slightly warm brown tone to it, but it doesn't look terribly rusted. So this looks more fresh. You could use a more orangey sort of brown if you wanted this to look like the, the scratches and the dings and everything were a little bit older. Uh, something like Mournfang Brown or Vallejo's Flat Brown would work well for that. But I'm going to use this one. And then you want your metal. Now I'm going to use Midtone Iron Breaker here because... You know, I think a really, really sharp, um, you know, like a, a very intense shine makes it look like it's just been dinged. And the whole tank covered like that looks a little bit peculiar, I gotta say. And if you use one that's too dark, it won't really show up. And that kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm going to go for this mid-tone iron breaker. Now, in order to do this, I'll take the turret off first of all. What you're looking at, it helps to have a little bit of a plan and you know, ahead of time. So what you're looking at is anywhere that the vehicle would normally see a lot of use, a lot of impact. So along corners on hard edges, for example, is a good spot. Um, handles, the corners of hatches, uh, these, you know, these hard edges, you want to look at places that are going to see a lot of action. Now you don't want to overdo this either. It's easy to go a little bit overboard with this. And same as with dry brushing, you can add more if you want more, but taking it off, uh, you're going to have to start over. So 
be gentle with it when you're starting out on this and see if you like the effect before you go any further on your vehicle. Now this is incredibly complicated as you can see. I'm just going to fold this and fold it again. So I've got this nice pillowy sort of bit there. Um, you can use the corner too, it doesn't really matter. Then straight into my paint and just dip it around to sort of mash it into what I've got there. And then all I'm going to do is just dab a couple of spots. So I'll just ding it down in another couple of places. I want to look like it has seen some action. And you can go over the same spot a couple of times. You know, if you want to deepen the effect, make it look like more paints come off, well, you put more paint on. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, you see, is just anywhere that looks as though somebody would put their feet on it or that it would run over the ground a lot. So if I wanted to, I could spend a lot of time under here, but I'm, I'm not because, you know, these gaming figures, you don't really see that. So up around the sides of uh, turrets, you know, handles, that sort of stuff, and just ding your way around until you're happy with how much you've got. So like I said, don't put too much on. Now I'm going to go away, I'm going to do this whole tank and the turret, and I'll show you what the first stage looks like. With that first color applied, you can see how it starts to break up just those edges where all of the hard detail is. So it pays to be as random as you can, and if at all possible, try not to mirror both sides. You do want this to look random, that's the point. So, for example, if you're doing a long and edge, rather than just dabbing your brush, your, your sponge rather, rhythmically along it, turn it. You know, twist the model, twist the thing in your hand, so that you're going to get a random effect. Now that doesn't take long at all. So what I'm going to do now is much the same thing again, if you can believe that, but I'm going to use my metal color for this. So same thing again. All I'm going to do is dab on the same spots that I've hit with the with the brown stuff. And you'll start to see how it catches that. Now you don't want to completely cover the brown. Okay, You want to leave a little bit of the brown. You want to use less silver because the idea is that these silver chips are just what's starting to show as the paint is flaking away. We've got the paint of the tank, then that undercoat, then these really exposed silver chips. So I'm going to go around now, do the whole tank, and show you how that looks when it's finished. Our second color is applied, and you can see how quickly and easily that makes a big difference to the tank. These edges, they look as though they've seen a lot of wear and tear now. And while they don't look as good as if you were going to spend a lot of time with weathering effect powders and that sort of thing, this is an easy way of getting this effect on your tank. Now this 12-year-old Lehman Russ looks a little bit more finished than it ever has before. So I'm quite happy with that, and that took me just a matter of minutes. So this sponge weathering technique is really easy, and I do recommend if you can get hold of some of this stuff, you know, this is the easiest thing to use. Otherwise, anything that'll give you a nice random edge as you're splodging it on that tank. So hopefully something in there was useful for you guys, and as ever, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. Feel free to get in touch. Thank you very much for your time, and as ever, enjoy the rest of your day.